Kevin Green and Nicole Petalides back with me here as we look at these reports. So, uh, didn't catch too much of a rally there, but at least we ended up off the lows for the session. It wasn't uh, quite as brutal as it could have been with bonds selling off as hard as they were. Uh, so, overall, you know, we came up this far, Nicole. I don't think it's panic just yet. Oh, hardly. I mean, look, you've had a market that has been up for five weeks. You've been hitting new highs. Not unusual to see a somewhat of a sell-off, in which case it was, what, 1.5%, 1.7%. Um, the averages were not down more than 2% at any point on the day. All 11 sectors, um, this is a, basically a 90 or 100% down day with everything to the downside. Often on the following day, you might see a little bit of a pop or buyback after you see every single sector in the red like yeah. you do today. Yeah, it was a pretty savage report. We're going to be adding Akamai to the list, it seems, of uh, earnings declines. Uh, I would caveat our conversation this afternoon, though, with the fact that all the earnings we hit yesterday were getting hammered when we were talking about them. And then a bunch of them firmed up and rallied back throughout the day. But Akamai is going to have a, a tough go of it. Uh, lower by about 8.5%. Takes us back to levels from uh, late November. Uh, numbers came in at the bottom line. $1.69 adjusted. $995 million on the top line. So that is a miss by about uh, 50, uh, well, no, about 5 million. So uh, they were looking for a billion. It's just a tiny, tiny miss there. Buck 69 adjusted EPS is about nine cents ahead of the estimate. So that's uh, generally uh, in the right category. Uh, the company is uh, very much in the cloud and uh, support side of the uh, notion that AI is going to require all new kind of uh, development and uh, support for it, basically internet functionality and cloud functionality. So I guess that makes this a guidance focus, Kevin Green. Is that what we should be looking for here? Well, it also looks like they did miss uh, revenue when it came to security and compute. Uh, that came in at 18% on a year-over-year -year basis. Market was looking for 19.6%, and that's around 60% of their total revenue. So that's also a reason why we did see that little bit of a mist on the top line here. And I think also guidance moving forward and how they're trying to strategically adjust their business. We know that they have been really transforming from uh, you know the linear type of platform and trying to focus more on the cloud aspect of their business. And it's just been a little bit of a tough transition here in the meantime. And then also the expenses going with that has eaten into margin. So I think this is just a tough story when it comes to guidance as well as its bread and butter business, seeing a little bit of weakness on the top line. Okay. This is a company that uh, operates behind the scenes for a lot of uh, web functionality, basically security and uh, efficient delivery of content, et cetera. So it's generally just kind of a broad internet play. Certainly a decent amount of disconnect from the core of the chip AI build out. I mean, everybody in theory is kind of spinning it their way, Nicole, but Akamai might uh, not quite be at the front lines just yet. Yeah, and you know, there's been a, you know, at least some optimism. It's been a leader when you think oh, yeah. about uh, what it's been doing in cloud and cybersecurity for customers, for customer identity. These are the types of things people have been looking for when it came to software. Um, they've only, in two years, they've only missed the revenue number once. So it is a surprise when you see a miss here. It's not, un it's, it's highly unusual for this company to have a miss um, where they've been seeing some good momentum. And um, overall right now, it's down about 9% on this. Okay, yeah, pretty big drop. All right, uh, but a big rally, 50% almost, uh, you know, just uh, in the last uh, eight months. Uh, so we've got a little bit of room to give, kind of been the case. Lyft uh, and Airbnb, two coming out. Uh, this gets pretty uh, clear in Lyft as their story has been one of struggle. Uh, the uh, move in the aftermarket is a little bit of a pop. Lyft's trying to rally here. Uh, Airbnb also out, though, too. Airbnb, a little change to the downside. We got a bit of a sell-off in Marriott today, down 6%. Airbnb was coming into this 
looking for revenue of about $2.16 billion. That was the expectation by analysts uh, for this trailing quarter. They were looking for gross bookings to come in around $15.2 billion and adjusted EPS of 68 cents. So those are the numbers uh, that we're looking for here. Uh, shares trying to uh, pick a direction here, a little bit of a drop, then a little bit of a pop. In terms of the overall uh, trajectory for this though, they do have some new products and stuff too, Nicole. I mean, they're trying out some ways to still kind of be uh, growth oriented. Uh, I'm pulling up their uh, press release, but it's not loading right now. Uh, what do you What do you think you about- why you saw me looking. I was trying to pull these press releases up too. Yeah, another side is like Sorry, frozen. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Yeah, uh, we'll um, let those numbers simmer for a sec. Uh, shares are rallying. I wanna know why Airbnb is up 10%. Yeah, uh, look, I mean, the idea was that they were at least going to meet the estimates. They've had a lot of strong bookings, the momentum. They've had solid momentum on their side. Um, you, you know, as we get these numbers out, you are seeing um, the stock now moving higher. Um, also, more supply has come on as more and more people have been um, using Airbnb. This goes across all geographies and all regions. There have been more first-time bookings. So there's been a lot um, that has been going in the last, in the right direction for Airbnb, and, and they've beat in the last four quarters. So they've had um, a pretty good run in the last four quarters. The one uh, headwind definitely for something like Airbnb would be the competitive space, the competition that they can see, um, and that's one thing that we should keep an eye on. And maybe when we read through these reports, we might hear, you know, are people gonna start booking other places too? But the competitive landscape has been growing as well. Well, they're trying to expand internationally. Uh, if you got the numbers, go for it, KG. If not, then let's talk some Lyft, because Airbnb's site is straight up not working. <laughs> Definitely. So it looks like quarterly gross booking value came in at $15.5 okay, billion, dollars, beating the street's nice, estimates of $15.34 billion. Their guide moving forward for EBITDA, mar uh, EBITDA margins, is they want it to be pretty much flat. So they're going to keep it at the same level, which is actually something that's very good, Oliver. We actually did see uh, a little bit of a contraction in the last quarter, and that has been the fear, as Nicole was talking about. A lot of supply hitting the marketplace, a lot of competition with the hotels has also caused, uh, caused the daily rate to go down but actually for this quarter their average daily rates were up uh, around three percent on a year-over-year -year basis which is also another good thing to see so beating both top bottom line margins are going to stay the same you're seeing the gross booking values also beating i think this is actually a pretty decent story and they also did announce a six billion dollar class a common stock uh, buyback as well which is always a good icing on the uh, the cake here if you are a company that's been struggling for the most part when it comes to the fundamentals at least trying to have consistency See, this is also providing a little bit more confidence in the leadership team. That's probably why we're seeing the shares move to the upside here. Based on the beat for gross bookings, it seems like a pretty clear bullish, you know, event. I mean, that's that's key, uh, especially after we saw the sell-off in Marriott today as well. Uh, the whole uh, hotel space got uh, blasted pretty hard today. Uh, Lyft has been getting wrecked. We know how much they're lagging behind Uber. The app is messy. They don't have anything uh, in the, I mean, they've got the bikes and the scooters and stuff, but they don't have any auxiliary businesses like Uber. Uh, gross bookings for Lyft in the fourth quarter up 17% on an annual basis to 3.7 billion. That's pretty much in line. Maybe like the smallest of beats ever, depending on which analyst you look at. Let's call it in line. Their next quarter gross bookings, they see 3.5 to 3.6 billion. That could be a little bit ahead of the expectation, Nicole. Uh, Lyft might have just beat on the first quarter outlook. Yeah, and I will say in the last quarter, they were talking about the gross bookings outlook and that it, it could be, you know, below some of the estimates. So it's nice to see that uh, the gross bookings, how are they up 17 percent year over year over year, the one point two two billion of sales that's in line. Um, these are some of the numbers that are breaking right now. And so when we see Lyft in the after hours, um, so 1.22 billion, that is in line. I just want to see exactly where this stock is trading at this moment. It's up 15 percent here in the after hours. So wow. um, certainly some good numbers here that people are bringing in. And they've really seen consumer Internet segments been doing well. The user growth has been on a pretty good pace. So we'll wait to hear more on that. But nice to see the, the gross bookings because that was something that they actually sort of 
gave a number that was a little lower than what was expected. So nice to see these uh, move in, in a good pace. All right. Uh, yeah, pretty good little pop for Lyft. Uh, I mean, for a while, uh, this uh, has been disappointing on earnings. Uh, do you think this has the potential to change the narrative here with the EPS also coming in? I mean, they're kind of, at least we talked earlier about how they needed to tourniquet the bleeding financially, Kevin. It seems like they're doing that a little bit here with the earnings improvement. Yeah, definitely. And actually, when you're looking at the active riders, that also beat the street's expectations by a little bit here. 22.4 million. Street was looking at 22.2 million, which is great. But I think the highlight here is the EBITDA expansion of around 5%, uh, you know, five percent, if you will, on a year-over-year -year basis, which is actually pretty good. So if they have that guidance moving forward as well, that has been the that was going to be the uh, the thing that could move the stock higher. That's what we talked about earlier this morning, and that's what they actually were able to provide. And hopefully, they're able to guide that uh, moving forward here and also kind of once again maybe dampening down some of the expectations or some of the fears when it comes to regulatory matters that could impact their business especially on the west coast all right seems like a step in the right direction still a loss but within 26 million that shouldn't be that hard to turn around when you got three and a half billion dollars of uh bookings coming next quarter come on just ring out another 20 mil get us across the the line into the black i'll give you the last thought nicole I, I like 191 million rides. A lot of rides. I mean, that's a lot of rides. A lot that's of, those a lot of rides. Back and forth from work. It's only six blocks, <laughs> yeah, but, but it's right? cold. I mean, that's certainly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I understand um, what you're saying. By the way, later when you, you're doing cart, I know you're going to be doing cart shortly. Yeah. Don't forget the lockup terminates on the 15th. Mm. And so that could bring some risk when more supply. Um, comes out. That was something that may have been buried in some of the headlines. I know you're reading them all, but that was something that one of the analysts um, was writing about. All right, good. Nice heads up. Uh, shares down for Maple Bear Cart. Getting to that next. Thanks a lot, guys. Nicole Penalides, Kevin Green.